Tonight, we have the details on the tragedy in Parkland, Florida that, that occurred this past week. And later, a fire alarm wakes up Marist students at 4.30 a.m. We'll tell you why. Plus, a special interview with the student bo body presidential candidates, Chris Glogan and Ted Dolce. Hello, and welcome to MCTV's first news week update of the semester. I'm Samantha Hessler. And I'm Jillian McCarthy. Here are tonight's top stories. Last Wednesday, 17 people were killed in a school shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. The 19-year-old gunman Nicholas Cruz is now facing 17 counts of premeditated murder. Among the victims, 14 were students and 3 were faculty. Cruz had been expelled from the high school a year ago and purchased the AR-15 while struggling with depression. Students nationwide and survivors of the shooting are now taking a stand to urge politicians to reform gun safety laws. This massacre is considered one of the deadliest school shootings since Sandy Hook. Mexico has been hit by two earthquakes over the course of four days. On Friday, southern and central Mexico were hit by a 7.2 magnitude earthquake, which damaged around 1,000 houses. The epicenter was in rural area of western Oaxaca state. On Monday, another earthquake hit southern Mexico around the same area as the first one. This one had a magnitude of a 5.9 and shorter and not as intense. Some people even slept through it. According to Luis Felipe Puente, the head of Mexico's Civil Protection Agency, there hasn't been any reported damage from the second earthquake so far. On Wednesday, a 31-year-old man crashed a store bakery truck into a Planned Parenthood clinic in East Orange, New Jersey. Three people were injured, a staff member and two patients, one of whom was pregnant. On Friday, Markles Alcius pleaded not guilty to aggravated assault and the attempt to cause widespread injury or damage, among other things. He is currently being held at the Essex County Correctional Facility in Newark. Alcius will appear in court tomorrow, February 21st. During their morning practice, the Marist women's lacrosse team was shocked to discover what seemed to be bones remains on the Tenney Stadium football field. After being notified by an athletic director, Marist security put aside the bones to be looked at by the Poughkeepsie Police Department. It was discovered that the bones belong to that of an animal and is considered lost or found property. According to officials, it is a common occurrence for animals to find and drag bone remains, sometimes for miles. On Sunday, a 22-year-old man shot into a crowd of people leaving a church in the Muslim Dagestan region in southern Russia. The local man was killed at the scene by security services staff upon his death. He had a hunting rifle, bullets, and a knife on him during the attack. The man killed five people and injured at least five others. Initial reports indicate that the five victims were all female, and among the injured are local security services personnel and civilians. ISIS has claimed responsibility for this shooting. An Ohio high school teacher has taken action to help some of her students afford college. West Claremont high school teacher Robin Hornberger has been training every week and paying out of her own wallet to run in a marathon each month for the next three years. She is using the marathons as a fundraiser and a way to raise awareness about the economic situation some students who aspire to attend college face. She has already raised $5,000 in 2018 so far, and hopes to have that number up to $500,000 by 2021. Last year, Marist alum Bill O'Reilly was fired from Fox News after six accusations of sexual harassment in the workplace were discovered by the New York Times. In the beginning of February, President Yellen emailed students informing them that O'Reilly's honorary degree was revoked. Jamie Keneally went around campus to ask students and faculty about their thoughts on whether or not this was the right decision. Members of the mayor's community called upon administrators to revoke Bill O'Reilly's honorary degree after sexual harassment accusations surfaced in 2017. A faculty petition gained 120 signatures, and after several months, the board finally responded. In a February 4th email to students, Mayor's College President David Yellen wrote, Bill O'Reilly has been accused of engaging in multiple acts of sexual misconduct and sexual harassment of women in the workplace. Mr. O'Reilly has denied these allegations. To many, his reported payments of tens of millions of dollars and dismissal by Fox News lend credibility to the allegations against him. Any form of sexual harassment or abuse is deeply contrary to the values of Marist College. The Marist Board of Trustees has therefore revoked Mr. O'Reilly's honorary degree. 
I asked faculty and students at Marist about their thoughts on the subject. I think it was a great choice. I think it was the only choice. Um, this is not the first situation in which there's a person um, of notoriety that has had their uh, honorary degree revoked for similar reasons. I think that the Board of Trustees made the best choice in this situation. Because if we um, don't revoke the honorary degree, then it's almost indirectly um, agreeing with his actions, and I think that we need to address the issues that he were being confronted with and um, make people aware of the issues that are going on and give people who don't have a voice um, a voice. I like that Marist is um, taking such a strong stance against um, like the allegations against him. So I think it's progress in Marist and supporting um, like no sexual violence and stuff like that. I think it's good that Marist is like taking a stand and I think it just says that they like believe the victims. It sends the right signal about possibly making the right kinds of changes so that Marist is a, a safer campus. Bill O'Reilly graduated Marist in 1971 and received his honorary degree in 2001. He funds two scholarships and it is unknown whether he will continue donating. At 4.30 a.m. on Friday morning, the fire alarm went off in New Gartland Building A. Students rushed out of the building, many still half asleep in their pajamas, some with coats or blankets. Many students immediately headed into Building B or C, while some stayed outside and watched as two fire trucks pulled up in front of, and at least four firefighters headed into Building A. The cause for all this early morning commotion? A student had sprayed a fire extinguisher around an area of the third floor for fun, not to put out a fire. Twelve hours later, the student was identified and handed over to student conduct. Over the weekend, the NBA celebrated its All-Star Weekend. Team World kicked it, off, kicked it off by defeating Team USA by a score of 155 to 124. On Saturday night, we saw Brooklyn Nets guard Spencer Dinwiddie win the Skills Challenge and Devin Booker of the Phoenix Suns with the three-point contest with an all-time high of 28 points in the final round. Rookie of the Year candidate Donovan Mitchell of the Utah Jazz closed out the night by winning the Slam Dunk Contest. On Sunday, the most important event of the All-Star Weekend, Team LeBron defeated Team Steph in an exciting game that came down to the last few seconds. This past week, Snapchat announced that it will begin to provide celebrity and high-profile users with analytics about how their posts are performing. Snapchat will give these users data, including total story views, time spent watching posts, gender and geographic breakdowns, Companies that sponsor celebrities and social media personalities are less likely to partner with these users if they do not have access to the analytics behind social media accounts. This announcement by Snapchat comes in response to some of its social media stars moving over to Instagram. This has been by far the worst flu season in nearly a decade. In the third week of January, there were 7,800 confirmed flu cases and 1,800 people were hospitalized in the state of New York. This has been the highest weekly number since the state began reporting them in 2004. According to the State Department of Health, because of this year's fierce flu season, receiving the vaccine is vital. Although it does not guarantee that you won't get sick, it does provide a lot more protection than no vaccine at all. This past weekend, the release of the latest Marvel comic movie, Black Panther, the movie grossed over $200 million in the United States, making it the fifth biggest debut of all, the direct, all, of all time. Directed by Ryan Coogler and starring Chadwick Boseman, the movie exceeded its projections and was shown at over 4,000 locations across the United States. The movie follows the Black Panther, who returns to his nation of Wakanda, where he is tested by challengers to the throne. The Black Panther can be seen in the upcoming Marvel film Avengers Infinity War coming to theaters this summer. As we approach the end of the semester, SGA and Marist students are preparing for student body presidential elections next week. MCTV's own Jamie Cornelia had a chance to sit with the pres two presidential candidates and talk with them and learn more about them and their campaigns. Take a look. Hello, I'm Jamie Camellia, and I'm joined here by student body presidential candidates Chris Glogan and Ted Dulce. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourselves and what you're running for? 
Would you like to start, Chris? Sure, of course. Hi, guys. I'm Chris Glogan. I'm a junior here at Marist. I'm a communications major with a concentration in advertising and public relations. Uh, I first got involved in SGA about a year and a half ago. Um, I've always been passionate about the role that I'm in. Currently, I'm in the Speaker of the Senate role. And honestly, I honestly feel like now is my time to really be for the students. Like I said in my speech last night, I'm here for you guys. I've always seen students come up to me. I love meeting people and really just getting to know the real Marist. So I really want to showcase that and really say it's here for you guys now. And here's my time. Ted, would you like to uh, sure. uh, my name is Ted Dalte. I'm from Miami. Uh, I'm currently a junior studying criminal justice and communication. Uh, I started in SGA my freshman year, but I've been in and out um, because I didn't really like the structure and the, um, how SGA conducts itself at Marist. Uh, so that's basically why I've been involved and how long I've been involved. So. When did you realize you wanted to run for SGA president? Sure. Um, so I got involved in SGA about a year and a half ago, like I said. Um, one of my best friends actually got me involved. And I saw the structure as it was, um, but I also felt that there needed to be some change. I really felt that the past presidents did the job that they were supposed to, but there was something missing. And in my opinion, that was the real issues. and the real things that we wanted to get accomplished. So I got involved. I immersed myself in trying to figure out what needed to be changed. I saw that communication was something that I really wanted to hone in on. And that's why I got very inspired. You know, Brandon Herb was somebody that I really looked up to. And to do that, you know, to see that throughout my time, it really inspired me to be student body president. So. Uh, before I answer my question, I just want to introduce Inkofa Billups who is my VP that I'm running with. I just want yes. to make sure that we recognize her. Um, also, I thought about running for SGA last semester because people were telling me to run for SGA, not because of me specifically wanting to. And it wasn't until I spoke with Nkofu and I told her, look, you and I, we have a great chemistry and how we work together, our work ethic. It comes from the heart. And I said this in my speech last night. And she was a little bit more hesitant than I was, but eventually we ended up um, making a decision and now we're running and we're doing it as we would like to. Okay. So what are some of the issues on Marist campus that you kind of want to fix if you're elected? Maybe both of you want to add? Also, I'd like to introduce my candidate. <laughs> my, my <laughs> John Ferris. Um, John, you want to? Yeah, so I think that um, Chris and I have talked a bunch about uh, what we would sort of do in like our first couple months after being elected. Um, one of the biggest issues that we see just in terms of like our own involvement in student government and other clubs on campus as well as talking to a whole bunch of people who aren't involved in student government is that there isn't a strong sense of student representation in student government or in terms of like the administration. So I think one thing that's really important to Chris and I is sort of um, uh, you know, we want to start doing uh, more like public forums, more like meetings. We can uh, bring in a bunch of students and say like, okay, so like these are the issues that we're hearing. Um, let's instead of, you know, these student gov government officials who many of people don't know, um, solving these issues, let's include the students and say, you know, like, what are solutions that would work for you? And, you know, working in terms of, like, that layer of the problem, as well as student government, and as well as more, you know, administrators who work at, who work in Greystone, um, you know, getting everyone involved is going to be the way to fix most of these issues. One of our largest things is to bridge the gap between the students, uh, the student government and the students. Okay. And what are some issues that you're focusing on in your campaign? Um, for me, uh, I'm certainly a novice to student government here at Marist, but uh, not to the system of student government, thankfully. Uh, but I think here, standing on the outside, I didn't even realize all of the functions that student government had up until about a year ago. And I was, um, luckily I've only been on campus uh, for, since my sophomore year, but learning a lot about uh, the functions of Marist College and all that we can do by creating a system of communication. And I think that's what Ted and I really work on now is working with students in all of the work that we do in Black Student Union and ARCO and the uh, diversity and inclusion boards is working with students in order to create the change that students would like to see and harping on their talents as well and using ourselves simply as a platform. 
um, because we got to the places that we are now due off of the backs and the talents of those who have come before us. And we want to continue to hold on to that legacy here at Marist and propel students and their ideas forward as well. I agree with everything she says. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you make a good team. <laughs> so many students at Marist are not really aware of what SGA does. Mm -hmm. um, so could you briefly explain what your role as student body president would be? Sure. Well, SGA itself at the moment is the student leaders on campus. You know, it's our job to listen to student concerns, hear what they have to say, and to really understand what we need to improve on. You know, we focus on clubs, we fo focus on initiatives that we want to work on, and there's senators and also the executive board that listen to those concerns. Student body president-wise, I would say that me and John are really focused on the communication side of it. We want to make sure that we're listening to the students, and that's what John was talking about with the open forums. We really want to get that feedback and really understand what the concerns are. And representation is absolutely huge for us. We want to go out into the community and say, listen, we hear you. We understand what you guys do, whether it's work-wise or it's accolades or anything that they do. We want to showcase that. And that'll be through our entire administration next year. Okay. Uh, the student body president, in my current view of it, I think it needs a touch up. I think in all things, you know, just because something is working or to some extent has been working doesn't mean it cannot be improved. And I think if we're looking at it as one dimensional, then we're always going to come back to the same issues that we have and we're still going to have to have these elections where people have to run that aren't familiar with SGA, but we can have people there already that knows the layout and can are able to be able are able to take charge and be able to say, OK, so this needs to be fixed. Let's put somebody here. This needs to be fixed. Let's put somebody here. And I currently think that the SGA student body president, the touch up that it needs, I think there's some new energy that needs to be there for that to happen. And I think a strong woman like Nkofa Billups is exactly what student government needs in order to have that shake up, in order to be able to recognize the students and start treating it as actual student government rather than just a government where we get to write the positions on our resume. And I feel like that's what it has been for the past couple of years, and it needs a change. Okay. So many students who are minorities at Marist feel it's not inclusive or unwelcoming. How would you change and improve the environment in the student body? I mean, I'd like to answer this and also you know, have John answer this as well. But one thing that we're really in interested and really uh, passionate about is making sure that it is inclusive, not exclusive. There are many social circus circles on campus, and there are many different people. And we want to make sure that it's a very universal environment. So how we do that is through the communication and getting the feedback, but also just to make sure that everybody is represented, whether that be Game Society, ARCO, Naturally Foxy, BSU. I had the pleasure of working with Ted and Nkofa last semester when we did our School Spirit Initiative. And so that's something that we also want to continue, is just making sure that we do those projects, but also that we are communicating with every single person on campus, because it is important to represent everybody, and it is important to have that specific communication, whether it be student body president, whether it be a resident senator, anybody. Kind of right, I would agree. Um, I think that it's true that from sort of like a surface outside level, Marist can seem pretty monogamous in the type of students that you know come here and are, make up the student body. What I think a lot of people don't realize, though, is that our student body is full of you know rich diversity of lots of people from many different cultural um, cultural backgrounds, socioeconomic backgrounds, religious backgrounds. You know, we, you name it. The issue that Chris and I see is that these students aren't being highlighted to the you know, extent that they should be. Um, so one thing that I think is important to Chris and I uh, is you know coming back to the idea that like college is for learning and these students who um, you know make up the standard Marist student um, they sh you know we want to create ways to highlight the students that are going unnoticed um, so that more people can realize you know the immense power that our student body would have if we included truly everyone. Uh I actually, uh, as a person of color and as a minority <coughs> on this campus, there has been a shift um, in the recent years. And I think this is an experience that people of color who have been here for the past three years or the past four years can see. Because as the classes have increased in numbers and, in, and diversity, I think 
that we are now creating our communities in different ways. So for me, it wasn't, um, I did not wait until I became the Deputy of Inclusion um, in SGA in order to make sure that we had a community. Before NCOFA even ran, we spoke about the different ways that we can make sure that different people of color on this campus have a form of community. And she has an amazing job with that. And it, in my position, it has not only focused on people of color, but also different people who are minorities. So when you have your, you know, different people of different races, um, those who are disabled, those who are of um, a different or sexual orientation or sexual identity, gender identity, all of those, we try it to some extent, make sure that they feel included in everything that we do. And all of my uh, board meetings that I have with uh, Lauren Palacios, who's the VP of inclusion, we make sure that if we're doing an event or some type of action or policy or we want something to change for the students, we make sure that those students are there. So these are all things that have been in the work. And I think that question, as much as I appreciate it, it does not look at the background and how much work that has been done thus far. And many of the people that came before us, such as Brianna Adams, uh, they put the groundwork for us in those seeds, and we have started to make them grow and blossom. And I believe that we can continue to do that in our administration. Uh, to briefly continue off with that, uh, even in my time being back on campus since my sophomore year, I've seen the change. And uh, for me, I remember it was a tough transition back from Florence. It was a total culture shock. Um, but seeing the change and being able to look back and see that Maris is making steps in creating spaces and resources for students of colors and all students. Um, one of the things that the leaving last board of the Black Student Union said to me was black, the Black Student Union isn't just a club, it is a resource. And um, if anything shook me, that was, that was what shook me. I was like, okay, God, they're gonna come to me for everything. Like, now I have to be mom number two on campus. This is so much responsibility, but it's true. As a black student on campus, you want to feel like you're able to reach out to anybody when you need something. And I think that's why it was difficult for a lot of students of color on campus, is because there weren't, wasn't enough representation and creation of spaces for us where we felt comfortable to reach out to all the resources. But thank God for the cultural uh, and multi, sorry, Center of Multicultural Services, uh, Services CMA, correct? Yes. Uh, as well as the Black Student Union and several other initiatives on campus that allow us to get comfortable on campus and fall into the mayor's culture, uh, culture seamlessly. Okay. What initiatives do you hope to create on campus? Sure. So one of our largest initiatives next semester will be the Open Forum, but we also want to focus on the real issues. And one of those real issues that we're really garnering for next semester is sexual assault. You know that it's a very prominent issue on campus, something that it's very uncomfortable to talk about, but we know that we want to make sure that it is handled and accounted for. We want to make sure that those people can comfortably go to resources on campus and express those emotions and express in a very diplomatic but also very understanding way so that they can go to those resources and say, yes, I've had to go through a very traumatic and difficult experience, but there's going to be a nice, easy process that they can go through. Aside from that, we also want to make sure that they are comfortable and they're also understanding that we are there for them. So our job is to build that community and understand that even though it may be a challenge, we want to make sure that we're the resource for them. Would you like to add anything, John? I mean, I, I could talk about revitalizing the student center, but that's a little more important. Okay. <laughs> so. All right. All right. Uh, so to add on to um, Chris's point, one of the biggest things for me uh, as a sexual assault survivor, one of the biggest things for me was actually starting to work on sexual assault awareness on this campus. Mm -hmm. And I actually, for the first time this year, I was able to tell my story and all of that. I was, uh, I had a, an interview and I've been part of these projects. And I'm smiling because I've gotten to the point where I can now tell my story. But 
I had a meeting about two weeks ago where I met with different groups on campus and it mirrored the Heritage Month initiative that Freddie, Deb, and myself started where we celebrate different um, cultural months. So Hispanic Heritage Month and Black History Month. So I wanted to mirror that for Women's History Month. And although sexual assault is not solely a woman's issue, it is something that women, sexual violence, women has to encounter almost on a daily, daily bit, um, basis. So for Women's History Month, we have a couple of different events that we have lined up on awareness, on education, on all of these different things concerning sexual assault. That is one of the pillars that we will be tackling for um, our administration if we are elected, if we are granted the honor to be elected. Um, but aside from that, the different type of events that we have hosted throughout the campus, we had a Night of the Apollo, which if anyone is um, familiar with that, which is so time at the Apollo, and that was that's an amazing event that we did last year, where many different people of different cultures, different backgrounds, were able to uh, show off their talents and be able to show us who they are. We had the culture dinner dance. These are all things that have happened, and we hope to build on. And many of the other things, I personally don't care for how. SGA is perceived because I believe it is in our actions that we will see SGA. I don't care for people not knowing what SGA is. I think if we are to do what people wanted us to do, then we will have known what SGA is. If we did our job correctly, if all of SGA did its job correctly, then everyone will know that the resource of SGA is. Okay. Well, I want to thank you all for coming, John, Chris, and Kofa and Ted. So the SGA presidential debate is on Thursday. It begins at 9.30 in the Student Center, or you can watch the Marist College television live stream on Facebook. Online elections will take place next week, beginning at 8 a.m. on Monday the 26th, and will close at 3 p.m. on Wednesday the 28th. For MCTV, I'm Jamie Cornelia. Now back to Jillian and Samantha. Jillian, it seems that we really have some strong candidates this year for student body president. Yes, I'm really eager for Thursday night and seeing the outcomes. Both candidates gave a really good um, representation of what they stand for and what they believe in. So. I think it's going to be a tight race this year. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see the results. Definitely very interesting, and we'll have to stay tuned for updates. <laughs> well, that is all we have for you this week. I'm Samantha Hessler. And I'm Jillian McCarthy. Good night.